Hello and welcome to this tutorial uh, to, for Redmine 0 0.9 uh, dedicated to applications developers. The examples in this tutorial will be illustrated through the Chamilo project. Chamilo is an e-learning management system. So basically it's, a, it's an open source uh, system, a free software application which means that a lot of people contribute to it and we have around 40 people uh, contributing to the development of, of Chamilo. So when we speak about, uh, when we talk about 40 people working together uh, from different places around the world, it's really important to have a specific tool that will allow us to um, to coordinate all these development efforts and to avoid uh, duplication in the work and, and that kind of stuff. So uh, Redmine is an issue management system, so it allows you to manage uh, all kind of, uh, of, of things that occur around and inside a, a software development project. What we're going to see then if we if I have a look at the table of contents, we're gonna see how to create an account, what, how the general interface looks like, how to report an issue, how to change the status of an issue, how to track time, and then we're gonna see uh, a few additional points. So Redmine, when you connect to it, it pretty much looks like this. It's a basic interface. You have a home section, which is the introduction to this installation of Redmine. Uh, generally you explain how to uh, become a developer for example or uh, how to report a bug and that kind of stuff in this section. Then you have the latest news which is the list of uh, news that have been published in every one of these projects. So you can see every time you have the name of the project, it's a link, so you can click on the link and get to the home page of the project. Um, you have the link to the announcement itself and then the link to the person who posted it. And then you have a, a small box which isn't really useful in our case uh, of the latest projects inside the, the, the Chamilo LMS uh, development project. So the idea of all these projects is that if you have um, one big software project, you might have like a project for documentation, a project for the design and that kind of stuff, which allow basically people to work together in a separate space. So the first step to start working on Chamilo would be to register an account. So, uh, for that you have to click on the register link on the top right uh, link and you will have like a small section asking you for a login which is your username usually uh, for a password to repeat the password um, and then your first name your last name and your email your email is very important because that's where you're gonna receive all the all the changes inside uh, the application or inside the, the issues. The language is your language. It's going to change the interface basi basically. You can put the country if you like or the birth date, but that's specific to uh, the Chamilo, this Chamilo installation. So I already have an account. So if you register an account on the Chamilo website, that's support.chamilo.org, uh, we, we will take a few hours to uh, check the validity of your account and then uh, authorize the creation of your account. So you should just register this form and then come back a few hours later and try to log in with your login and password. So in if you have already created your account, you get to the sign in uh, page, which is also the link on the top right side. And you just give your login, your password. Um, in my case, it's my computer, so I'm quite sure that nobody else is gonna use it. So I click on stay logged in uh, so that my session remains open as, as much as, as possible. Then I log in, and when you log in, you'll get uh, to your page, that's uh, URL my page. And your page will tell you which issues are assigned to you, which issue issues you watch, and 
what is the time spent that's that's coming from a plugin that we have installed on the system so maybe you don't have it uh, on a basic 0 0.9 installation of Redmine but you can add this plugin and it's a very very useful plugin okay so in terms of interface you can see that we have uh, a first link here that says home which is the first page that we saw before my page is the page that we just saw right now projects is the list of projects available to you so the public projects or the, pro the projects to which you are uh, subscribed and you can enter any project to see the details of this project the time tracker is something available only when you install the tra time tracker tool the administration link is only available when you are administrator of the redmine platform and help is a series of uh, a link to a series of, of documents that can help you uh, on the redmine website on the other side you can see that you are logged in as uh, y that, that's my account but you will see your username there uh, you can click on it and then see details about that user well, your your specific sheet that's the that's the view that other users will have if they look at your account if they follow a link of some some place where you re reported an issue or something like that then you can see a time counter which is not running right now that's normal that's that comes from the time tracker plugin you have the my account um, tab which is basically your account your country your date of birth and then what type of uh, frequency you want for the email notification so you can uh, define if if you want to receive uh, an event in every project that you're working on or if you don't want to be notified or anyway then you you choose and then you have the time zone which is important if you have a geographically spread population of developers uh, because then they will see stuff in their time frame and you will see in the time zone and you will see stuff in your time zone and that's much better for everybody you can also have uh, you have a lot of stuff that you can do additionally to uh, connect this account to something external uh, but that's not part of this tutorial and then you have the sign out link which allows you to uh, disconnect from the from your account and then you have a search box yeah the search box allows you to decide in which project you're going to search so let's see uh, let's say i want to search in the jamilo project but i haven't entered any search term inside the search box so it will basically send me to the home page of the jamilo lms project if i pick jamilo lms here okay if I pick Chamilo Association, I will get to the home page of the Chamilo Association. If I pick Chamilo LMS, I will get back to Chamilo LMS. So this is basically the, 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 the generic interface. Now we're going to delve a, a little bit more, a little bit deeper inside the, um, the interface of a specific project. But before that, I just wanted to, to, to check, maybe you know, maybe you don't, but every search box in, in, in Firefox can be uh, linked to a specific key. So let's see, for example, uh, I have the support.chamilo.org. So let's say I want to easily search for a task. Let's say I want to look for task 4545, okay? That's, that's a number of issue, an, an ID of an issue. Okay, there, there we go. I'm, I'm getting to the issue 4545. Okay, let's say that I'm on another website. So I'm, I'm on Google. Okay, I'm google.com. I'm here. I went wherever. I, know, I went in uh, uh, maps. And I, I want to jump from here directly to the task 4545. Now the only way to do that normally would be to get to Redmine and then connect and then once we're there, we're inside the right project, look for 4545 here. But what you can do in Firefox is click right here and say add a keyword, that's in French here for me, but add a keyword for this search. 
and that will pop up a new window in which you can select you can say yeah that's that's a search term for uh, support.chamilo.org and then say that you want to put a keyword which is support chamilo.org seo okay that's it and you and you register it now if you're on another website and you suddenly want to see 4545 you just type seo which is your search uh, keyword 4545 and it will directly uh, jump you to the, the tag so i really recommend that uh, you store the search keyword inside your browser because it's really making things much uh, faster in terms of uh, looking for specific tasks so if you want to become a uh, Chamilo developer then you definitely want to know about this project and and the first thing that we will ask you to do is to learn how to report bugs and learn how wh what the coding conventions are for, for Chamilo so that typically is placed in the wiki okay that's in the, the information database and in the wiki you will find uh, how to report bugs and you will also find here coding conventions okay we're gonna get back to the wiki afterwards but that should be your first steps inside uh, the well, as, a, as a future developer of Jamilo LMS so here on the home page you will see a small introduction of the project the sub projects if there if there are any and then a list of all the, f the issues inside the system uh, by category okay by, by type of issue yeah it's, it's more correct to say the type of issue so you have bug feature support to do usability this kind of stuff and you can see that for this project at least you we only have bugs feature and support support is generally someone asking for help or for an answer regarding something that he doesn't understand features are new features asked by users and bugs are issues that talk about something that doesn't work. Uh, we can see all the issues. We can see a calendar. The calendar is a is a specific view that allows you to yeah to really locate bug fixes or bug reports on, in time. So you can see here every day is marked with a small array. That's a small arrow. That's uh, the, the the green arrow indicates when a specific uh, bug has been reported. So you can see that all the bug reports are growing in number here, just growing, increasing in number. And when you, when it's marked uh, red, that means that it's supposed to be closed. You know, it's a, as you can see, the due date is on the fifteenth uh, of July. Okay, so that's that's how we. We try to um, to arrange stuff so it's easier for us to uh, to organize the dates at which every uh, kind of uh, element should be closed. Okay, very good. So that was the calendar. We were looking. We also have a Gantt chart. If you have uh, configured correctly all the tasks, then it will really appear nicely. Otherwise, it will appear something like that. So. We don't really have dependencies. We don't ha we really have uh, uh, precedences because basically, if if somebody wants to take over a task, then it just takes it over. That's that's how we work in the in this uh, project. Obviously, we have uh, people working on it and who have assignments, specific assignments, but they they are free to choose at what time they do uh, this one or this one. They just have to. Uh, go forward with uh, all of them at some point okay so let's go back to the the overview of the, of the project on the right side you have the members box which gives you a list of all the members by roles so you have managers developers reporters um, reporters are usually people who report new problems they found in the software but they're not developers, so they don't fix them, but they, they report it. It's really important to have people, independent people from from the, the developers who report bugs, because sometimes developers, even if they do a great job, they can't really uh, be in the, in the skin of all the users. 
So reporters are really important, they represent our users. And then you have the latest news for this project. So uh, the next tab is the activity tab. The activity tab is a tab that shows how active was the project today or yesterday or it goes back in time. But as you can see, uh, every day has something uh, occurring. So if you look at it, it's, um, it's pretty much if you just added a, so let's say you added a task, okay? So uh, here I, I added a task a few, a few minutes ago before starting this uh, tutorial. Um, and you can see that adding a task is like a, a yellow um, sticker, no? like a post-it. And then if I added a comment, if anybody added a comment to a task, you can see a small uh, chat bubble. And then if someone closed off or rejected the task, then it's marked uh, checked. Oh, that's, that one's been checked already. And then uh, if you have a, a, a task addition, then it's a small pencil. And then if you have a s version control uh, commit, a new version, then you have a small uh, mechanical uh, wheel. Okay, so what can you see here? You can see the time at which something was modified, the, the ID of the, the issue, the status, uh, if it has been changed, and the title of the issue. This, is, this all is a link to the issue itself. So if you click on the link, we can see the details of the issue. Uh, at the same time, you also have the name, well, the first line of the comment or the description of the, the issue, and the name of the person that uh, made this change to the issue. You have a series of filters on the right side, which allow you to uh, put some more information inside that activity presentation. The roadmap tab is pretty much made to allow you to organize the development in versions. So it, it is based on versions that you will define in the settings tab as a project administrator, but otherwise it will not, I mean, you won't have anything showing here unless it is included inside a, a planned version, a scheduled version. So here you can see that 19RC1, uh, the release candidate one, is uh, scheduled in 11 days and we still have 139 tasks open. So we should close 10 per day or something like that to get to the objective. Um, you can see a green bar, a double green bar actually, a dark green bar and a light green bar. The dark green bar indicates how many tasks uh, in, in considering the total amount of tasks, so in this case uh, 210, you can see that already like 30% of all these tasks have been uh, closed. And actually you can see it here, 34%. And then you have the 66% uh, open, but from these 66%, we, alre we already are more or less at halfway because uh, the progress for each of these tasks has been uh, changed and has, has been marked as a, you know as almost resolved as we we're gonna see how the stages work regarding that uh, but if you want to know about the version so you can click on uh, 139 open and you will get to the list of all features that are still pending before you can release the version RC1. That's the idea of the versions. And then you have the other versions due in 18 days, so seven days later. Then you have version 192, sorry, um, etc. etc. By default, we only show the feature requests uh, inside the short list here, but you can also add the bugs and then it becomes uh, a bit more messy okay because there are usually much more bugs than feature requests every every new feature created generally uh, triggers something weird in a case and one case and another and uh, that's pretty much it for the roadmap so if we go to issues now we're gonna see a list of issues so it's it's the same these are the same issues that we would have seen in the roadmap view 
but in more details and it's not it's not uh, sorted by version it's uh, basi basically all the, f the issues are present here you can see the the ID of the issue which is very important because from any place any place uh, where you can edit text uh, around in Redmine you can indicate a hash sign the number of the task and it will link automatically to this task um, the tracker is the type of task or bug feature or support the status is generally new when it started assigned when it's assigned to someone and then testing or need feedback when it is uh, assumed to be uh, uh, finished but that we require someone to counter check it so the idea uh, here is that in Chamilo LMS, a developer cannot close his own task. Someone has to come by and check that effectively the fix or the feature developed by the developer is working. Okay. Otherwise, he has to comment and say why he considers that that is not working. But that ensures that the developers won't uh, get cocky and say, you know, uh, yeah, that's okay. I'm, I'm very good at it. So I can close it automatically. No, they have to check with someone else. Okay. That's that, that increases, uh, the quality of, of the project. So here on the first part you have, oh, sorry. Uh, I was, I was talking about the status. It, it, when it's closed, then you, it disappears from this list. And that's because we have a filter here that says status open. Okay. Then you have the subject of the, the issue, which should always try to fit in something around 100 characters, because otherwise it starts being very difficult to read this list. Then you have the author of the, the issue, and which is the person who started the issue. And then you have the target version, which is what allows us to know how many tasks have to be finished before our RC1 in the roadmap view. And then we have a percentage done. That is that that means a percentage complete of uh, the a percentage of completeness of the task. So if you want to, you can also add filters. You know, you can say, oh, I want the priority to be high. I want uh, so I want to see only the issues of which the priority is high. I want to uh, see to 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 see how only the tasks that are complete at more than fifty percent, and then I would put a person done here, and uh, that kind of stuff. Okay, you have pagination, so you can decide whether to show twenty five or one hundred or two hundred and fifty in only one page you can see here that we have 25 per page and we have six pages only for version rc1 okay so to declare a new issue you would go to new issues here to the new issues tab and here you can pick which type of issue it is if it's a bug if it's a feature of it or if it's a support then you can add a subject, which is a demo issue. For example, in this case, something's wrong. Yeah, something is wrong, demo issue. Okay, demo issue two, because I already created one. Uh, and then we add the comment here, saying how we get the issue and how to reproduce it. And then we leave the rest pretty much open, usually when we are not a developer. Now, if you're a developer and, and you know or you, you can actually assign it to someone, then you should assign it directly to someone like this, assigned and then assign to pick a developer in the list. Okay. But otherwise, I mean, if you don't know, you just leave it open. Um, the target version will also be set by us. So if it's a bug, don't worry, we will consider it in the, in the, 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 the really the closest version to be released uh, then we have complexity which you can define by yourself in the, in the platform administration settings and then you have a start date, a due date, an estimated time which allows us to uh, um, schedule this task because for example we know that someone will not have three hours straight to work on this so uh, we start to push it a little bit later if it takes three hours to close. 
and then the percentage done is the amount of completeness that um, that is correct for to describe this task and then you can attach files you can add other files here if you want and finally you can select watchers watchers are people developers or reporters who will receive every every change in status every new comment by email to, to this task i mean see so if, if i if i uh, select julio montoya uh, then he will receive the 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 announcement of this task this issue being created but at the same time every time someone adds a, uh, a comment it will also send him an email so don't abuse this option there we go so that's that's a task that we created we can find again all the the fields that we had seen before in the in the creation form okay and then you have the description and then we have the possibility to add subtasks that means that if, if i click there i will be sent to another form to register a new issue but i can i can yeah i can define a sub issue if i think that this issue here is a bit too much to be done in one go so i prefer dividing it into several pieces and then we have the related issues and the related issues is very practical as well and it also plays in the Gantt chart if you really put for example if you say that it follows another task then in the Gantt chart it will appear as uh, to be started after the first one has been uh, finished and as you can see if you come if you're if you're feeling comfortable with uh, Gantt you also know that you can set delays in days uh, between the end of the first uh, issue and the start of the second one okay so we have several options if i want to add comments to this task i will click update hmm, update and i will add my comments uh great i will put great okay so if if i know that uh that this changes the statutes or, so, or something like that I will select and put the changes here and say okay it's a sign that's okay it's part of RC1 okay well no, I'm gonna leave it empty it's a sign to uh, yeah that's okay it says operas is, is good and then I'm gonna say if, if if I know if I've spent some time here, I'll, I will just log the time and say okay, that's been uh, support time until now. Yeah, so here with in the comments I put talking, sorry, talking with the client. Okay, for example, no, so I know that I've been talking with the client for two hours, so I pointed it here. And then it will be it will be visible in the list of uh, connections and 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 uh, registers of time used for to resolve that issue. You can attach files, you can link, and here the help formatting help uh, um, is a small window, but it's also I mean at the end of the window you also have more information still. But that basically tells you how to format your your comments without the need of HTML, for example. Okay, that's very interesting as well. So once we're happy, we can just click on submit, and submit will register the task, and that's it. Okay. So now I know that I'm gonna delete these, but I mean that that's gonna be in a few minutes still so we, we we've seen us up to new issue to create an issue news is simply announcements that can be sent by email to all the participants of the project documents is the documents area so you can upload specific documents in specific sections you have the wiki which is the way for us to coordinate all the information 
uh, that we have about the development of the project like the coding, coding conventions, how to report bugs and that kind of stuff the files tab is a list of all the files stored in this project the repository is very very important it's a it's a copy or it's a somehow a mashup of what we have in the version control system so if you use git or mercurial or bazaar or subversion or, or even cvs um, you might want to to use to connect these version control systems to redmine that's done through the settings tab and inside the settings tabs you have a lot of settings as well so you can just uh, check repository and here you can put a, a, a URL of where the sources of the project that you're dealing with are stored on the same server as, as Redmine so it has to be there um, well apart from that so the repository allows you as well to make a difference uh, between two versions so for example here um, I want to know what happened in the last day or so so I click view differences and then I can see instantly the things that have changed inside the code of Changila okay. there we go so uh, we've seen everything except the details of the issues I create a new issue there's no big deal I have to fill the form let's see there we go so in issues in issues if I want to to show that in the code I've been doing some 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 hacking and I've been having a lot of success doing so inside every one of the the, the, the issues that have been changed through um, a version control system has a little additional block here associated revisions it says okay that is a direct link to the revision that fixes that supposedly fixes that problem so what you can see here is that we actually we use a specific denomination for that uh, this is a keyword to recognize that the comment this is a comment uh, added to mercurial and it's not it has anything nothing to do sorry um, with the with with the, 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 the markup in redmine directly so what we did is configure in redmine that if it checks see if it sees the word c and then followed by a, a hash key then and followed by a number then it could consider this to this commit and this entire commit to be part of the task 5141 and if we look at it it's actually what it does so basically putting this one here this C task means that in the task itself it will after a while after synchronizing it will recover the details of this commit and, and leave it there and that's very very important to do the tracking of the changes that actually fixed a specific problem because sometimes we have regression we have uh, problems that have happened before and so it's very useful to have a reparent, uh, um, to have an example at hand of what we did to fix it previously Okay, so I can add if I want to add comments. I can add comments. Let's let's go to our test issues, uh, programs. Okay, no, that's that's. I'm changing the filter here. Okay, so that's demo issue two. Okay, we had 
set it to uh, two hours we put that we had done some work 50 percent and then now i want to say okay it, it seems to be completed so i checked it so cesar was the one to update it um, supposedly so i checked it and i say okay for me for example okay thank, thank you all and then you can change the status and say okay this one is resolved Okay, because it's a bug, because it's a bug, and you can see that here in the in the tab of the browser, because if it's a bug, it's resolved. If it was a, a simple feature request, it would be closed. No, it would be implemented. Uh, but resolve in play something like give a solution to something, and uh, yeah. Anyway, um, the need feedback option is when a developer assumes it's over but requires the attention of uh, another person to confirm that he's right okay here in this case because it was a demo issue i'm going to put closed or rejected but better even okay so because it's rejected that means that nobody else will be able to write in the course until it's unblocked in some way in the course what nobody else will be able to add comments to this uh, task unless they are developers and they have the right to reopen the task okay very good so i click on submit and then this change of task properties will be uh, registered here so here i say that i see sorry that the task moved from assigned to rejected okay uh, and so the task will not appear anymore because it's considered closed by a rejection okay it doesn't appear anymore but I mean what I wanted to to show is that you can update any task and then write whatever you want but you have to have the correct permissions to do that okay so um, I'm adding and that write whatever you want and then I want to close it okay I have a few people answering it so the progress went up okay and then it requires testing or it needs feedback okay so I'm assigning it to me but I'm saying okay it should have feedback all right then everybody looking at this task afterwards know that they can be of assistance here and just say okay uh, usually when I'm gonna check a task I'm gonna say okay uh, checking uh, now and then if I'm not the, the person assigned to it I will change the assignment and send it to me okay I will say yeah okay uh, I, I I'm I'm okay I will I will check that it's working and then if that works out sorry so by doing this by assigning it to you and say okay checking now you you make it so that it's less likely for somebody else to do the same at the same time okay they will probably be looking at the same issue and so they will receive a message saying that uh, something is being done with this issue okay so here I'm happy with it so I will close it we reject it actually but that's pretty much the same as far as we are concerned here there we go and if we go back to the issues you can see yeah uh, we don't have any demo issue anymore okay so very good example here we have a uh, Marco who ag added some task in while we were speaking okay um, all right so inside the issues, oh sorry, inside the issues screen, you have filters and you have options, but you can also uh, save a filter. So let's say I only want to see uh, the ones who have been authored by me. Okay, um, I'm okay with that. Okay, there you go. So it says uh, I have reported 92. Okay, very good. So I want to filter it to narrow. 
like a million this one i also want yeah 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 this one i also want another another option so for example everything for beta or for rc1 okay apply and I see a, a list of only 27 okay and then I'm very happy with this uh, search so what I will do is save it here and give it a name so Yannick for RC1 okay so putting that comment will make it so make it appear as a filter by that name okay and then I decided it should be public in the sense that every user uh, getting to the Jamila installation should be able to reuse that uh, search query for projects now we're not gonna do so much uh, and then we can define the, the default columns that should appear uh, in the in the result in the listing and oh, you have a lot of other options here or well, the same options that we've seen before but you can uh, select still alter a little bit and then you can sort by column and um, by type of uh, sorting so I'm just gonna save it there we go okay uh, so basically now we have Yannick for C1 on the right side okay because it's a safe search so if I click on it I will get only the results of this uh, search and that I'm not happy with it so I can delete it okay there we go so the, the, the Yannick uh, element didn't appear here okay um, I think that we're pretty much almost done we still have to see the time tracking features so time tracking, tracking feature, feature is quite nice it's actually it's a plugin so if if you are an administrator you have to go to administration uh, check on plugins and then you have here you have to s add the plugin in a specific uh, directory on inside your redmine installation for it to be understood by redmine and then you can see the redmine time tracker plugin you just configure it and, and that's it all right so once you've done that the um, every every issue i recommend that you go to the issue and register time so as soon as you start working on an issue just click on start here on the top right side because basically that will start your timer for this task now if you clicked on it it's counted on the server as well so you don't have to worry about disconnecting your your browser or, or, or restarting your, your computer you just leave it running and when you you're done with the task in whichever other page that it will be you will see that header and you just click on stop and then that sends you to a specific page where you have to uh, appoint the, num the, the amount of time that you spent uh, on the project which is by default it should be the correct time all right unless you started before you started uh, so you started to work on it before you started the timer then you can adjust it here let's say that by default it was suggesting that it was 0 0.31 uh, minute uh, hour sorry um, so it will be like 20 minutes or something and um, and you put a comment you say um, uh, counted time for nothing yeah so I'm, I'm gonna reduce it because I'm I don't want to to really modify the the risk the current uh, timing tracking and then you select the activity so for example here it would be development if, if, if it's a graphical design or or usability design it should go to design and if it supports or people uh, getting getting yeah getting <laughs> requiring assistance then you would have to market that support and then that will allow you later on if you go back to overview of the project on the right side you can see details 
Yeah, if you click on details, you're gonna see all the people who uh, registered some time working on Chamilo. Okay, Chamilo LMS. So they registered some time, and then uh, you can generate a report. So you can say, for example, I want a monthly report with uh, the member and the the tracker so now you we're gonna see for every person how long they spent on bugs how long they spent so on they spent on features and how long they spent on on support so we get to the end of the list we're gonna see the amount of uh, of hours there okay uh, you can also define a time frame and thing, that kind of things uh, if you want to, there are apart from the repository that you can define here. I don't know if you remember that. You can define it in the settings, in the project settings. Here you can define the repository. But in the repository, you can also make a difference between versions of the code. So, for example, let's say that uh, index index should have change recently okay so on the 25th of june that was the latest commit by laurent brecht and then we select another date and say okay i want to see what happened here in a month or so because you see that 29th of uh, of may and 25th of june so you want to see the differences between those two and you just click the view differences button you can see all the differences Red is that a line has been removed. Green is that a line has been added. Okay, great. There are a number of options of uh, additional options that you can access to by through the administration uh, page, which enable you to uh, connect your Redmine to other applications. We have a private key. You can you can send emails to get new tasks registered and that's pretty much it okay so if you have any question don't hesitate to uh, to tweet me that's uh, why one year so that's this account over here with an at sign at the beginning um, this presentation a little bit of uh, advertisement. This presentation was brought to you by Business. Oops, there we go. Uh, if you want to know, to know more about us, just go to www.businest.com. And um, I hope to see you around. Thank you. Bye.